written over the blind Chinese activist Chen Guangcheng has understandably captured the world's attention in the last week. But the event of much greater significance remains the ouster of Bo Xilai, the powerful party boss of Chongqing. The rise and fall of Bo is part of a much larger and potentially disruptive trend in China, the return of politics to the Chinese Communist Party. We don't think of the Chinese Communist Party as a political organization these days. It's dominated by technocrats obsessed with economic and engineering challenges. These men, and they are almost all men, are comfortable talking about detailed economic and technical data, laying out master plans for development, but they're not politicians adept at handling large crowds or palace intrigue. This apolitical system is a recent phenomenon and the outcome of a conscious decision by the founder of modern China, Deng Xiaoping. When the Chinese Communists took power in 1949, the party was dominated by charismatic revolutionaries and military leaders. Court politics, intrigue, ideological posturing, and mass politics was pervasive in the new system, and the new leader, Mao Zedong, was a master politician. <laughs> Mao presided over a period of hyper-politics. Political purges, the Great Leap Forward, the Cultural Revolution, all designed to divide and destroy his opponents, and consolidate his power. It was against this backdrop that the next great leader of China, Deng Xiaoping, took power in the late 1970s. Deng was determined to end the high drama of Chinese political life and focus on economic development. He turned the party into a professional organization that was run by technocrats. By 1985, the party's top leadership, its central committee, was dominated by younger, college-educated graduates and the Politburo's standing committee the country's ruling elite, were all engineers. That tradition of technocracy has persisted. The Communist Party of China, a party whose history is tied up with peasants, workers and soldiers, is now the most elite political organization in the world. Its system of promotion favors engineers, economists, management experts over anyone with grassroots political skills. For two decades, China has been run like a company, not a country. But China is in fact a country, a vast, complex one with a long history of politics. And eventually politics had to re-emerge. China has reached a level of growth and development where the big questions it faces are not technical engineering ones, but deep political, even philosophical ones. Bo Xilai represented this emerging reality in two ways. In a system of colorless men, he was charismatic, conniving and political. He was comfortable in front of crowds, eager to push himself forward, and rubbed against the grain of consensus decision-making. But he also represented the New Left, an ideological movement that emphasized social and cultural sol solidarity, the power of the state, and other left-wing populist issues. Whether he truly believed in these issues is irrelevant. Like all good political entrepreneurs, he saw a market for these ideas, and he filled it. Bo's ouster is the most significant purge in the higher ranks of the party since Tiananmen Square. And the party will hope that, as after those events, the party can return to its technocratic path. But China has changed too much. And politics in China in the future could be xenophobic, nationalist, populist. They will almost certainly be messy and unpredictable, like politics everywhere. For more on this, see my essay in the latest issue of Time magazine or on time.com, and it's 